All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at VEX uh, code XP, and we're going to be adding a single motor uh, here. So we're operating or uh, uploading to slot one. We've saved our uh, a file as motor. Um, in this case, I'm connected to the controller, uh, which has already been paired with a brain, and we're uh, connected with the controller to the USB, so it's downloading the program wirelessly from the controller. Okay, so where we're going to start at here is that we're going to start at by adding a device. So we're going to click on device and we're just going to click on motor. Uh, the port that I'm going to use is port three. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep the motor uh, going forward uh, for now and we'll do some experimentation with that and maybe reset it later. And we're going to go ahead and click done. Okay, so at, there are a couple different ways to spin the motor, so we can uh, we can have it act as a, a regular motor, so we can spin it forward. Uh, uh, so spin motor three forward. Notice that we only have a selection here for the motors that we uh, we have defined in our devices menu on the right. So we can start the motor and then scroll down to control. We can wait, say one second, and then we can stop the motor. Um, now, the motors don't act as you might expect in this case. So, for example, we just hit, say, motor forward. It will just keep spinning if there's no weight. Um, so, VEXCODE EXP is, <laughs> is full of uh, under-the-hood, um, not-so-intuitive programming. So, it really does take some experimentation. It's not you. <laughs> it's the program. So just, just know that things might not uh, go as expected. Things might not act as expected here. So, uh, okay, so here we have spin motor forward, wait one second, and stop motor. So let's go ahead and download that. And let's see how we do. So this, this motor uh, is the motor that is, a, uh, that is connected to the arm in this case. Uh, so let's see what happens here. We download it, and we're going to click run. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so we uh, we run it, it goes up for one second and stops. Okay, um, we can um, we can also take this motor. Now notice how our arm fell down. So let's go ahead and remove that motor. Um, we're gonna set uh, motor three uh, stopping to break. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and add that stop back in, which I shouldn't have. So let's let's see how the stopping affects this. So let's go set motor three stopping to break. And we're gonna go ahead and run it. Okay, there we go. What about hold? Okay, we're gonna download. Okay, and so you see the difference there. So the stopping mode really does make a difference. So these smart motors are uh, are um, able to hold a position, but you need to have the setting there first. And then finally, let's take a look at coast. Okay, um, so it's uploading here. And then we're going to run again. So notice that post, break, and hold are quite different there for setting the stopping mode, right? So we need to set that uh, stopping mode when we when we want to have uh, um, to get our expected result. All right, uh, we're also going to take a look instead of um, instead of spinning a motor for a certain number of seconds we can also spin the motor forward for say 90 degrees. So let's say we want to set, uh, we want to set uh, the, um, the stopping to hold. Uh, and let's say that we want to, uh, want to go ahead and spin the motor forward for 90 degrees. Okay, so in this case, the, it's literally the motor shaft is going to turn 90 degrees. So the smart motors have a shaft encoder on them. Um, which is going to allow us to uh, to spin that motor for a certain number of degrees. So let's go ahead and run that. So that was 90 degrees. So notice that depending on the gearing, that may not be as far as you thought. 
so let's go ahead and we can spin it. Um, let's say that we want to spin it for 360 degrees. And notice that it stopped in the original position. And then it dropped back down once it was uh, uploading the code. Okay, so there's our 360 degrees. Uh, let's say that we wanted to go up and then back down. Okay, so we can uh, take this uh, take this motor forward for 360 degrees, right-click duplicate, um, and let's say that we just want to wait there at the top just for a second. Okay, so we can do a couple of different things. Either we can set it to reverse, or we can set it to, or we can leave it in forward and just call it negative 360 degrees. Okay, that's our choice. Let's go ahead and also at, at this case. So we're basically, so we set the motor three to stopping to hold. We spin the motor forward for 360 degrees. We wait one second. We spin the motor uh, forward for negative 360 degrees, right? And then stop motor. Let's just for, for simplicity's sake here, let's go ahead and just not use negative numbers since we don't need to. So we'll do reverse 360 degrees. And then let's go ahead and also take a look at the Python code here. So basically here we have, we've set our variables. Um, I defined a variable uh, 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 earlier, which you don't really need here. Okay, so so basically we have, uh, you can get rid of this my variable as well. Okay, so here we, um, if you notice, um, when we make, oh, we'll get back into variables, but okay, so this is the basic code. So we have our when starting one, uh, we can name this anything we want. Uh, this is just the automatic name and then we call it. And then we have motor three set stopping, motor three spin forward, wait one second, and motor three spin reverse, uh, 360 degrees wait true, and then uh, motor three stop. So this is the, the Python equivalent here. Uh, notice that in the Python code, there is no uh, place to do this uh, device setup, which is kind of interesting. I'm sure there's a way to add it, um, uh, just it does, doesn't appear here. So, uh, Okay, so let's go ahead and download to uh, the robot again, and let's take a look here. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, click run again. So it raises up, pauses for a second, and then goes, uh, uh, moves back down. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at the last uh, way that we can move the motor. So the motors can actually be used, uh, I would say, as a servo. So so um, actually, that we didn't need that last stop motor on there. Um, so the motors can also be used as a servo. So so we can spin um, motor three to position 90 degrees. So we, so we can basically spin these, um, uh, we can spin these uh, motor to some particular position. So in this case, let's say we wanna turn it to position 180. So we can imagine here that we would basically just turn to a set, uh, a set degrees. So let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so in the in the previous example, we we turn spun the motor 360 degrees forward, then 360 degrees in reverse. Okay, so in this case, we have we're spinning our motor 180 degrees, but then what we're going to do is we're gonna we're gonna spin motor to position, and we're gonna spin it back to zero degrees. So we don't have to really remember where it was at. And that's kind of the benefit of using this, uh, what I would call servo, uh, uh, servo mode of the motor. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, download that. Okay, we'll go ahead and run it. All right. Okay, so that that is uh, those are our three. Uh, 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 ways that we can move the motor. Uh, let's go ahead and just take one more look. Um, 
uh, one more look here. So we uh, we also can print out some data about the motors. So do we see here motor sensing is done, is spinning, velocity, all of these things uh, can be printed out to the uh, to the console or to the um, uh, brain. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that we want to see what um, what the motor position is in degrees. Um, Okay, and let's uh, let's go ahead and spin motor forward um, one degree, and let's get a little bit more advanced. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and print that motor position in degrees out into the console, and let's go ahead and put that in a um, in a loop, and let's say we want to repeat that uh, ninety times, and let's see how we do here. Okay, so here we're, we're just putting uh, this code into a loop. We want these things to repeat 90 times. We're gonna move the motor forward one degree, and each time we do, we're gonna print out the motor in position in degrees. So let's go ahead over to the, um, the console, and we'll run. And it didn't like that. Okay, let's get rid of the loop. And uh, this is <laughs> this is one of the things I was talking about with the the um, the unexpected behavior here. It sometimes has difficulty with loops. Um, okay, so we're just going to spin the motor forward 100 uh, 180 times, or sorry, 180 degrees. Uh, and also printing out to the console, uh, I should have already done this. Uh, basically, you have noticed that if we don't set the cursor to the next line, it won't, uh, won't print in the console. So I'm just going to download that one more time. Okay. So it turned the motor 180 degrees, and notice that we print the motor position in degrees and we get to 176. So it got to uh, uh, the motor position, got close to 180. It probably had a loop in there, stopped at 180, and then fell back uh, about four degrees there. Okay, so those are some different ways that we can use. We can set up a motor and use some of the motor commands to get the motion that we're expecting and, and that will work for our uh, devices. Uh, best of luck.